Hey guys, Michael and Iris here. Right now, we're going to be talking all about heptic ulcers inside the GI tract and exactly what they do, what they are. We're going to first go over the pathophysiology, then talk about um, nursing process. Now, whenever you're studying really any subject, you need to make sure that you're studying only the key words. And that's why I focus on only key words in these videos. Key words in nursing process is data. So laboratory, uh, vital signs, uh, pretty much uh, physical assessment findings, signs and symptoms. Then we'll move on to action, drugs, uh, and um, patient education. Those two most common nursing interventions. Then we'll go on to response. How should the patient feel after this nursing process we just did? So let's get right into what the heck is a peptic ulcer. So peptic, uh, peptic ulcers is just an ulcer inside of your GI tract. And we call it peptic ulcer because the main acid inside the stomach is pepsin. And if there's an overproduction of pepsin, uh, and it can deteriorate the lining of your GI tract. Now you can have it in the stomach, you can also have it in the duodenum, and uh, we're also going to talk about how H. pylori, which is a um, bacteria, can also give you a peptic ulcer as well. So first of all, let's go over a little bit of the pathophysiology of the stomach itself. So we know that the stomach has a mucosal lining. This mucosal lining helps protect your stomach against itself, against all the hydrochloric acid, against the pepsin, and against the other enzymes inside your stomach that deteriorate and break down food into chyme, or chyme, whatever you want to call it. And then, after this food is broken down, it will dump it into the duodenum here, the first portion, of your small intestine. Then it'll go to the jejunum, then to the ileum, then to the large intestine where everything's really excreted into the potty. Okay? <laughs> so once your uh, mucosal membranes become eroded to the point at which the epithelial cells are exposed, that's when these gastric juices start to eat at your epithelial cells, basically the, the skin cells inside of your uh, stomach. So if it eats all the way through and you get a peptic ulcer, you can get a perforated bowel, which just basically means there's an opening now where all this toxic waste, or all these nutrients really, uh, is now going into the peritoneal cavity. Now the peritoneal cavity, just think about your body is always ziplocked in different cavities. So uh, the way your body works is pretty amazing. All your organs, uh, whether it's your heart, your all the organs in your abdomen, um, your intestines, they're all covered with uh, they're basically all compartmentalized inside a cavity or basically I call it a Ziploc bag. So for your heart, your heart has a pericardium. It's almost like we have a little Ziploc bag. You put your heart in and you Ziploc it. So let's just say that your heart has some, some type of trauma and you get hit in, in a uh, car collision. Your heart's not going to slam up against your ribcage. It has that little baggie that keeps it from trauma. So in the peritoneum or the peritoneal cavity, your body is protecting itself. Just in case you get socked in the stomach, it's going to protect itself against that stuff. So in the same way, let's say your bowels burst. Let's say you get a perforation inside the plumbing of your GI. Not your entire body is going to get infected all at once. Only your peritoneal cavity is going to get infected in peritonitis. 
that's like the first chamber. So your baggie is going to fill up. You're going to get a very de distended stomach if you have a perforated bowel. Now, just depending on how bad it is, um, we're going to get into that. But um, just for right now, just know that your body protects itself in little kind of Ziploc bags. So that's one of the uh, uh, complications of peptic ulcer. So let's get into exactly the assessment findings in terms of the data of uh, peptic ulcers, whether it's duodenum or uh, stomach. Let's do the next video here.